In the history of the sport of sailing, like all sports, there are the occasional icon that that stands out. Uh, you know, we have no fam we know famous football players from the old days. You know, Bronco Nagurski and Johnny Unitas and those guys, and uh, you know the Babe Ruths of baseball. And so, uh, Ted Hood is a man of that stature in the sport of sailboat racing, and, and he's a, a, a quiet New Englander from Marblehead, Massachusetts, who. Uh, grew up around the sport of sailing and became very famous uh, America's Cup skipper in the 1960s and uh, world-class ocean racer and so forth. And, and I didn't know him terribly well, but I was, you know, doc friendly with him and we shook hands a few times and I raced against him quite a bit in my younger days. And uh, at the age of 86 or so, he recently uh, passed. So they. Uh, they had a nice big memorial service for him at the New York Yacht Club in Newport, Rhode Island, which I'd never been to before, but it's, as you could imagine, is a grand place, you know. Uh, the big sloping green lawn that goes to the water's edge and the big mansion house in the background, and they put up a giant, beautiful white party tent, and they had the little violinists and music players and flutes and whatnot, and, uh, you know, and then the little uh, beverage uh, tent, you know, with the little food afterwards and and, uh, and the family, um, there were a number of speakers, it was about an hour and a half and they were well north of a thousand people there, maybe 1500 or so, it was a big turnout and, and the backdrop was the harbor with the nice little boats in the mooring area and little sails going by and it, and it was it was very touching, you know, and the family told sea stories about when they were kids cruising with dad and some racing stories from his old crewmates and some business stories because he, he had a substantial business empire in the marine industry. Mm -hmm. and, and it kind of, um, for me personally, it sort of puts an era, it's the end of an era, you know, when great, when great people are no more than that's just the end. It, it does, and so the sport has changed and it's, those people aren't in it anymore. In, in my younger days, and I was ocean racing, I was talking to Gary about it when we were on the water, we have some boats and experiences in common. And Ted Hood was a major player, as was Ted Turner, who we know from today's news media and so forth. And, and uh, those kinds of industry icons were omnipresent at these activities. That's, that's people who, who go sailboat racing. Um, uh, Prime Minister Heath, you know, he was a boat racer. And the, uh, the Watson brothers, the uh, IBM, uh, as a matter of fact, uh, one of the Watson boats was at the dock. At, at JFK. Uh, JFK, Legends. right, exactly, and well, so Stiles, excuse me. yeah, no, right, he, he did, and so, and so that's the kind of people that sort of made up this sport in days gone, you know, back in the day, as we say, and so that's <clears throat> sort of gone now, and not that there aren't rich people of notable, you know, pedigree, I suppose, the most recent of which is Larry Ellison, which we know from the recent America's Cup, but. But it's a different system, you know, it's not the sport that it was, you know, this America's Cup thing is a technology battle with computers from Boeing Aerospace to operate the boat, and it's it's not of interest to me anymore. I prefer the old school. And, Guy, and the, sorry to interrupt yeah. you. Tell them a little bit about the Southern Ocean Racing Circuit and how many boats were used to go out on those races. Well, that's... Again, it's a little hard to des to describe, but there were in the heyday of the sport there was a, a an event here called the Southern Ocean Racing Conference. It consisted of six offshore races, uh, the shortest of which was an ocean triangle of about 30 miles, and uh, the longest was a uh, notable from St. Pete to Fort Lauderdale, which is about 450 nautical miles. They used to race to Havana, but after Castro, that was omitted from the schedule. Mm. Uh, but there were six races, and, and at St. Pete Yacht Club, where they would start, there would be a, a forest of sailboat masts, and all the boats would show up, and people from all over the world, Europeans and South Americans, and from California and the Great Lakes, and people would spend gobs of money to bring their boats down because it was really the place where business was settled, where all this took place. And, and um, you know, the smaller, smallest boat would be 30 feet and the largest boat would be about 72 feet. Those were the maxi boats of, of the time. And, and so it had all these boats racing and then here in Miami, uh, at the, it was in February and then they'd race around to Fort Lauderdale and then we'd have a race off Miami Beach and then 
it would culminate in a race to Nassau, and that's 186 uh, nautical miles. And uh, that would, they'd have maybe 100 boats on the starting line for that race. It would be a big, you know, winter time, you know, usually nice wind, and everybody would be in Nassau, and there'd be big parties there, and uh, certain uh, activities amongst the crew, which I have been sworn to secrecy for decades <laughs> now. I, if I told you, I'd have to kill you, so I can't, I can't tell you what we really did after the race or between races, but they were epic, parties of epic proportion. <laughs> <laughs> but, but they were uh, great experiences and, and uh, you know that for a variety of reasons usually there's a, a confluence of events you know a perfect storm between economic factors and and uh, personality issues and political things and all it just sort of dissipated and no longer exists there still is a race to Nassau we had a, a crew here from uh, a sailing school that we won that event in uh, 2005 mm. but it weren't a hundred boats, there were twenty boats or something at that time, so it was a, a small fraction of what it once was. But still a nice race, it's an overnight race, you know, a nice place to end up and there's good hospitality there. But uh, that's what it once was. Ted Hood was part of it. And those were the heydays. So now we have uh, now we have this and what we do here at Castle Harbor is a little, it's a kind of the beginning, you know, it's it's the um, uh, it, it, the incubator for the mind of, you know, people learn to sail. Not everybody wants to be a racer, but some they do. And if if you get the bug like I did, you know, it's like not everybody wants to be a tennis player or a bowler or a pool shooter or whatever. But if you get it, you get it. And then the mind goes, oh, how can I go faster and learn more and do better? And it becomes a, it becomes a fascinating fascinating sport. Kai, you mentioned Hood's business empire. Was it mainly the sales or what? Well, it, it started with that, but he, a boat building industry and a, and a designer also. They had a design office. Uh, mm. uh, up at New York Yacht Club, they had uh, uh, the Watson's boat there called Palawan, the, the IBM guy. I guess he's still alive, and he had a big, I guess it was about a 70-foot big, beautiful chrome and varnished teak, you know, big yacht, which was one of Ted Hood's uh, designs and builds there that I'm guessing is probably a four or five million dollar boat, so it's probably a little profit in there somewhere along the line for, for somebody, <laughs> for the yacht broker. Shh! <laughs> 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 uh, yeah, I did that yeah. bit, right? <laughs> <laughs> I, I'd like to say one thing. If it were not for Guy and his love of racing, we would not be here today. Absolutely. He started this school of it 25 years ago. And to my knowledge, it's the only place in the United States where you can just come down to May 50 bucks and go out and have a, your own boat and then race. Uh, if it weren't for a guy, you'd have to be a member of a yacht club or own a boat to be able to do what we do every Saturday. All right, let's hear it from Kai. Yay. All right.